The only thing that stinks about cow kings is, as you can see in my hand right here, when they're babies, they like to pee and poo on you. Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. We only have two more days before we are off to Mexico and having some fun down there. Today, I think I'm gonna spend a little time with Bella. You know, I kinda realized she is such a special animal to me and I really haven't had her in the vlog very much lately. So we're definitely gonna spend a little bit of time with Bella for those of you people that love my rhino iguana. We're also gonna take a look around some snakes and just see what's going on here. I am spending the day here at BHB again, today and tomorrow and then we are off to Mexico what do you say we just push all our problems aside today and have a great time together let me know down in the comments how your day is going you guys know I love to read about you and while you're down there can you do me a favor and smash that like button what do you say we go see Bella and get this day started and for those of you that don't know and hopefully you certainly do but if you're new to this vlog this is my girl Bella she is a rhino iguana and I absolutely love her to death we've had her for a little over a year now and I've said this many times he has kind of changed my entire outlook on kind of relationship with reptiles because usually I've always had a really great relationship but nothing like this I mean you can see she just puffs up she wants to be petted she loves the human attention she is just incredible so what I'll do on a day like today when the pups aren't in is I just literally open up her cage I put this down and I let her come out on her own now she always is like can I come out and play <laughs> so she does as soon as she she realizes that it's time to come out she'll come around and I let her just kind of run around for a few hours get some freedom in the summertime she loves going in the windows and getting some basking light in the winter she just kind of runs around so we'll let her come down and then we'll feed her some strawberries she loves strawberries <laughs> she's being a cheeky monkey right now she wants me to feed her come on girl you want this hey. You know, lots of people ask me, are rhino iguanas like a really good pet? And the truth is they can be, but you have to have space, time, energy. You know, we're actually building Bella an eight foot plus size cage next door that she's gonna have a ton of room in. It's literally gonna be like eight foot by six foot by like eight or nine foot tall. So she's gonna have a huge amount of space. And that's really what you need for something like a rhino iguana to really give them what they need. Bella is about half grown now, so she's gonna get much larger. And it's just important to give her plenty of space to run around. But other than that, if you have the right setup, the time, the energy, everything like that, they can be amazing animals and now that they're being captive produced pretty regularly it's pretty cool that you can get a really great captive born baby you'll never find a cooler reptile that's for sure but again it's not for everyone these aren't disposable pets people this is something that you're gonna have to spend the next 40 50 years of your life taking care of so make sure that when you're ready for an animal like Bella here that you are prepared to give her whatever she needs because <laughs> and if you decide to take the plunge trust me it is an amazing experience And that's one of the things I think that's so amazing about this girl. She would come around, she'll run around, and when she's done, she just goes right back in her cage, and she goes, I'm just gonna hang out here for a little while, and I'll just go ahead and leave this cage open so she can come and go as much as she wants. And I find that she usually spends about 10 or 15 minutes running around, and she heats up a little bit, and you can see she's shedding just a little bit. It's okay, Bella. You're a good girl. So one of the things that's really nice about hibernation is that really, I'm not as involved in certain areas of the collection. So basically, if Eric is taking taking care of something or Jessica like I kind of let them do their thing that's one of the things that's great about having a good crew they kind of are autonomous so they know what they're supposed to do and if there's any problems certainly they come to me or Lori but for the most part they just kind of do their thing but when we get into hibernation I get a little bit of a chance to kind of pop in and just kind of really check things out and it's really awesome to see animals that you may not have seen for four or five weeks and just see how they've developed and it's really freaking cool so I want to show you a couple things that popped out as I was going through racks today hey Take a look at this tangerine Honduran milk snake right here. 
Holy moly, and it's a feisty little monkey. Calm down, buddy. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. But look at the color on that. That's one of the nicest ones I think I've ever seen. I mean, it's almost all orange with just little teeny tiny white bands. I'm so glad that we're hanging on to this one. This one is gonna be a future breeder for sure. It's a male, and they'll probably be ready in about a year, year and a half, and we can take him to some really beautiful females and see if we can't get maybe a solid orange tangerine Honduran milk steak in the future. And then you guys might remember this animal right here when I hatched it. It was actually a thumbnail of one of my vlogs. It kind of looks like one of those Halloween candy corns or something like that. Again, this is a Honduran milk snake. And I'll be honest with you, I've never hatched one that had that yellow in the middle like that. Those big, wide yellow bands. So of course we hung on to it. And again, I saw this when this very first hatch, this is how it looks a couple months later. This thing is so freaking awesome. Then this little dude is freaking awesome. Of course, this is a mosaic cow king, but it's got that really crazy wide stripe on it. These are something that's similar to what we call tire track California king snakes. It's a different genetic thing because the tire tracks were actually an offshoot of banana cow kings, whereas this is the mosaic variety, which is really more of the black and white rather than the coastals that are brown and yellow. But I just think that thing is freaking wicked. And I absolutely love this snake right here. This, of course, is a granite Max Max. And you guys probably remember when I was hatching them this summer, we hatched out some crazy cool granite Max Max. And we decided to just hang on to a couple of them to raise up just for future breeders. And this happens to be one of them. Again, it was just a little pencil when we saw him last time. And he's definitely getting some size on him and looks absolutely incredible. And then another Cal King that is crazy cool is of course this high white black and white California king snake. Look at that thing, holy cow. We started working this project like literally like 18, 20 years ago and we had just a barren black and white cow kings and we just started breeding the highest white to the highest white and over the last 15 plus years, we've ended up developing animals that are literally like this one here that's like 90% white. I mean, how freaking awesome is that? The only thing that stinks about cow kings is as you can see in my hand right here, when they're babies, they like to pee and poo on you. Um, that's the way it goes. <laughs> As it gets bigger, they definitely calm down and they stop doing that. But that thing is super neat. After a quick wash of my hands, I wanted to show you this here. This, of course, is an albino beauty snake. Look at how freaking awesome that is. And remember, this is the one that we bred a T positive to a T negative, expecting to produce normals that would be double head for both types of albinism. And it popped out albinos. We only hatched out two of these out of the clutch, but this is one of them here. And it's freaking so cool. Of course, the beauty snakes are amazing animals. This is a Chinese beauty. They max out at about six foot, but some of the like Taiwans can literally get eight plus foot long. Look at how cool they are. I mean, they're just such incredible snake and all of these tiniera are just some of my favorite animals i've been working with them forever and i think they're super cool so we're gonna raise this little bugger up and see if we can't produce more albinos like him so today i'm working on getting more things on the website and the thing i'm doing right now is going through all the new tree boas that we have so i thought i'd show you hopefully you guys can see that he's really dark but then if you look at the patterning of that crazy like orange red coloring and again, he's got those crazy yellow eyes too. So this next one really actually surprised me. I wasn't expecting something so big. He's much bigger than the other one. And he's kind of cool too. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> I'm gonna use the stick because I don't wanna get bit. But uh, look at the cool pattern on him. Like he's got some pretty neat looking pattern going on. Very cool and feisty and a really neat head. So this last guy I think is by far my favorite. This one here has, again, a really cool pattern. He's got some really cool pattern, like red pattern going on on there. See, look, I can even pick him up. But uh, he's got kind of like these, instead of the yellow, they're almost like a reddish orange color eyes, which is really neat. So I think that this guy by far is my favorite. And I think that I'm his favorite too, since he just bit me. You guys know that we are actually heading to Mexico in just a couple days. Are you psyched or what? I'm very excited. What, what is your plans? What are, what are we gonna be doing? Are we gonna be doing a lot of fun stuff? Plans are a lot of eating and drinking and laying by the beach. And then we're gonna go to a croc farm and we're gonna go to a monkey place and a dolphin place and the Mayan ruins and a bird place. That's what you're doing. I'm gonna be on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> will you at least come to the Mayan ruins with me? Yes, I will okay. do that. 
All right, so the deal is we are leaving in a couple days. A little bit of a break, kind of a relaxing time. Lori's going to be on the beach, kind of just partying it up the whole time. But I want to continue to do a lot of adventures. There's a croc place I definitely want to go to. I think there's a monkey place I want to check out, like a monkey forest type of thing. Uh, this is really controversial. I want to go check out the dolphin things. It's like a swim with dolphins. And listen, there's two types of animals I'm not a really big fan of in captivity, and that is porpoises and primates, to be totally honest. I'm not going to go on a big thing about them, but that being said, I looked into the place I want to go to. It's a huge place right off the ocean where you can actually get in with dolphins. It doesn't look too expletive. I mean, certainly people do it. It's a tourist thing, but I don't really know. I want to know from you guys. Should I stay away from it? I mean, it's something that I kind of always wanted to do, but I don't want to ever promote doing something that's bad for the animals. I mean, what do you think, Lori? Uh, I mean, that actually something I would do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Lori might come with me. If you guys don't mind us going to the dolphin place, Lori might come with me and we might do dolphins together. Uh, we're definitely going to see the Mayan ruins and it's just going to be an all-in-all -all blast. I need a little bit of a break. Lori needs a little break. But we're going to bring you guys along on the adventure. It's going to be absolutely epic and we leave in a couple days. There's that Woma python trying to breed still. The female quite isn't ready to give it up. She's probably still in the early stages but he's been really trying to breed so it's really good. The python season is off to a blazing start. I mean, we've been having 15, 20 locks for the last couple days with ball pythons. A bunch of the other stuff is breeding, so it's going to be absolutely incredible. And I'm going to talk about like the philosophy behind breeding and how I do things over the next month, month and a half. But basically, just really quick, what we'll do is we'll cycle really three different things. We're going to be cycling the temperatures, where we drop temperatures both ambient as well as the hot spot. And the hot spots are in the back of every single cage there. So we actually have heat panels that are on thermostats. So we'll actually cycle that temperature down at night. We'll cycle the ambient temperature of the room at night, but we're also cycling the amount of food intake. There are some people that breed snakes that don't even cycle temperature, they only cycle food. So they'll put an animal kind of on a more maintained diet during the summer months, and then as the winter comes in, when it starts to get time for breeding, they actually really increase the amount of food into females, causing the females to get into follicular growth. And finally, we'll increase the humidity a little bit. So we want to go from just kind of a moderate humidity to a higher humidity. You got to remember in the case of most pythons, it's actually really a dry season and a monsoon season in most of the places that they're from. So basically what you want to do is increase the amount of humidity because that's when they breed over in the wild. And by the way, take a look at this really quick. That's actually a ghost honey cypress that is bred to a ghost pastel. This is the first time he's ever bred. He's only a year old and we had him with a female the last couple days. It's the very first time he's bred. So how exciting is that? Again, I'm going to continue to teach you guys how to breed snakes if you so want or you can just follow along my madness, whatever it is. But I'll be giving you tips over the next couple months so you got to definitely stay tuned. But uh, again, 2018 breeding season has been starting out amazing. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up because I have a bunch of work to get done before we leave here. Here in a day and a half. I still have to edit. I have a ton of emails. I've got a lot of work to still do. And I can't tell you how much we are looking forward to this little vacation and bringing you guys along on this vacation too. It's going to be absolutely epic. Lori and myself have been going nonstop for over a year without any kind of a break whatsoever. So it's going to be so needed and it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to bring you guys along on this adventure. And thank you so much for all your support and thank you for wanting to follow along my life. You guys mean the world to me. We are so close to a million subscribers. It is so humble. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. I love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button as well as turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video which is every day seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to someone today and I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.